In this small workshop in Pakistan, the only things they haven't built yet are the ones they haven't thought of. Here, nothing seems impossible. The shop may be small, the tools may look ancient, but what happens inside could easily make an engineer at Tesla raise an eyebrow. Piles of rusty scrap metal lie scattered around. What most people see as junk, they see as potential. Those discarded steel pieces are the main ingredients for building electric motor housings. Bought cheaply from scrap dealers, melted, reshaped, and reborn, each one becomes part of a brand new, affordable electric motor. After selecting the right pieces, the workers weigh the scrap, then feed it into a large furnace that looks more like an old chimney than a modern smelter. Down below, fire roars as they wait for the metal to melt. Unlike large factories that use high-pressure forges, this team relies on the sand casting method, a process so simple yet so clever it's practically poetry in motion. They mix molding sand with clay and used engine oil as a binder, then grind it together until the texture is just right. The mixture is pressed into molds, packed tightly and shaped with careful hammer strikes that could wake up the ghosts of the Neolithic era. <laughs> Meanwhile, the furnace glows bright orange. When the valve opens, molten metal flows like a river of gold, pouring down into steel ladles before being filtered and cast into the sand molds. The heat reaches 1500 degrees Celsius, but no one flinches, probably because they've survived worse, like power cuts during summer. Once cooled, the mold is broken open, revealing the rough motor casing beneath. It's still raw, covered in sand and imperfections, so it's taken to another corner of the workshop for machining. There, lathes hum and sparks fly as workers flatten each surface, drilling holes with precision that would make a CNC operator question his job security. Once the shell passes inspection, the real magic begins, the winding process. Copper wire is carefully wound using a handmade coil machine, then inserted into the stator lined with insulation paper to prevent short circuits. When the rotor finally slides in and spins freely, everyone smiles, not because it's perfect, but because it works. For the finishing touch, the motor is painted green, their signature color of hope, energy, and maybe camouflage from the tags office. And just like that, from scrap metal and sweat, a fully functional electric motor is born, not built by robots or algorithms, but by hands that refuse to give up on possibility.